working through our fears. At the moment, many people are very fearful. But what is fear anyway? It's an emotion. What are we frightened of? It's important to understand where your fear comes from. When you understand, you can work with it. You see, many times when we are fearful, what do we do? We resist. We actually get panicky. We start shaking. The knees start to move. The heart starts to palpitate. And the first thing we do is we get upset with it. We get upset and we get nervous. And that's the last thing we do with fear. When the fear rises and you know when it rises, you feel it. Like I said, the trembling of the hands, the movement, the knees, your heart. When it starts to rise, look it straight in its face. What is it that I am fearing? What is it? And if you look at it, it's always some kind of attachment, fear of loss, loss of a loved one, fear of loss of what you're used to. It's all to do with your attachment. Everything we feel and fear is because we feel ownership. And when we come down to the basic teaching, nothing is ours, nothing is ours, we are all here on loan, then we can calm down. But that's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. And this is why we really have to work with our fears. And when we work with our fears, we also have to be very patient. You can't, you know, like our master always said, the room was, was not built in a day. And many times when we work with ourselves, we get frustrated. Oh, you know, by now I should be over this fear. I practice so much. And why isn't this happening? Why do I still fear, feel fearful? The reason is, is because we have yet more to learn. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Fear, actually, when you go through it, makes us stronger. I love to quote this story by my that my grand told, my elder granddaughter told my younger granddaughter. And I'm going to tell it again because it just really makes you understand how to work with fear. You know, there is a lovely story about a bear wanting to go through a forest and he doesn't want to go through because he's so scared and he's so frightened of the pain that he just stays there and he's stuck. And along comes a friend and says... You know what? If you want the honey on the other side, you cannot go over it. You cannot go under it. You have to go through it. So how much do you want that peace and acceptance? So the bear thought about the honey on the other side. That gave him the inspiration thought about the peace on the other side that gave him the inspiration so the acceptance was i'm going to go through this forest and as he goes through the forest he's cut and he's hurt and he's miserable and he's full of pain but he keeps going keeps going keeps going and then when he comes through the forest on the other side there is the honey, there is the peace, there is the joy again, and laughter comes back into his life. And working with our fears is kind of like that. And the reason why we avoid them is because we know that while we are working through them, we're going to be maybe a little traumatized, a little bit, <laughs> by our own emotions, what comes up. Maybe we are so scared to, to, to face it. So you have to work through it. If you don't work through it, you will always be stuck behind it. I'd love to read you a beautiful poem by Rumi, if I may. And it's called The Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. 
the dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door, laughing, and invite them in. Be grateful for whatever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. And when we work with our fears, when we first start working with our fears, it really isn't an easy thing to do because you will find that you will start judging yourself. And especially when you're spiritual and you've been working on yourself, the most demeaning thing would be, oh, how, how, how do I carry these fears? I'm a yogi. I shouldn't be uh, frightened of heights. Oh, by the way, I used to be petrified of so many things. <laughs> And when I started yoga, I remember hearing Master Shivananda's words. When you meditate, fear will leave you. Anger will leave you. What I didn't realize is I thought, when I meditate, it's all going to go away so quickly. No, it didn't. When I meditated, what did happen was everything I feared came up to the surface. Why? Because now that I could hear and watch my thoughts, I was able to watch what brought me the most fear. And this is what, this is the gift meditation gives us. We can see our thoughts really clearly. It is a gift, but it's also a curse. It's a double-edged sword. <laughs> if we look at it as a curse, then we will suffer and stay in fear. If we look at it as a gift, okay, uh, now I know what I fear. Okay, why do I fear this? And you know, it was very funny, my fear of heights, for example, after a year of meditating, my husband took me to London. We used to do a lot of buying there. And you know, I was always petrified of those escalators going down. You know, they're, oh, now you have them at all the airports when you travel. And, but in those days, they were like, oh my God, I couldn't look down. I feel like I'm going to throw up. My knees would tremble. I'd have to hold on to him when we were taking the, um, the metro. And, um, and I was like, I can't look down. I can't look down. Well, after a year of meditating, we went to the London Underground. And I, while we were going onto the escalator, I started chatting with him. And he looked at me. I'll never forget the look on his face. Melanie. Why aren't you panicking? <laughs> and I go, oh my God, yoga works. Yoga works. Now, what happened there? During the year of meditation, a lot of the fears came up. I was dealing with other kinds of fears that I felt were more important for me, like the fear of being alone, fear of bugs, <laughs> so many things. I was scared of everything. But while I was working on, on them and conquering them, automatically this fear seemed to subside in the background. It was what I thought least about. And I was so happy to see that whilst working on the other fears, this one by itself left me. But like I said, it takes time. Now we're going through very fearful times. I get a lot of phone calls. Uh, okay, my job, my pay, uh, how am I gonna make this through for the next two or three months? What if it lasts longer? How can I do this? Will I have enough money to survive? And first thing I go is, hello everybody, we're all in the same boat. <laughs> At least one thing you can be sure of, we have the charity, so we can all share food. Food you will have, so don't worry about food. And that's all we need to survive, right? For the body to survive. So I go, we can make enough money to have food. That's no problem. And we can simplify our food. No problem. So what else are you worried about? I won't be able to pay my rent. I said, well, nobody else will. Can you imagine if all the landlords got everybody out, then they really would have no chance of making some money when things went back to normal. So don't go there with your mind. Oh, but Melanie, you don't understand. And I just, as I do understand, I'm in the same position. I have to pay bills too. And I said, but it's no point going there because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Well, do we? We really don't. And really, when you focus on this great truth, you can work through any fear. You really can.